1. Example 4 creates the same result as that which was produced in example 2, except that this time a key v language file is used. 2. A key v language file creates widgets and defines their behavior. These have the extension .kv. They help separate the logic from the presentation. However, it is possible to do everything with Python at the expense of having more code and harder to follow logic. 3. A main key v file is always searched. It has the same name as the app subclass, except there is no ending app in it and everything is lowercase. Additional KV files may be loaded with the help of the builder class. 4. In the Python file, note we are importing only one user interface element, boxlayout. We will create a class which will inherit the functionality of boxlayout. This class is called the root class. The reason we are not importing a button class, even though we display buttons, is that all button code has been moved to the KV file, and thus the Python file does not need to have the button name in its namespace. 5. This is the root class, which inherits from the box layout class. It has two functions, which will be called from the KV file, after a button is clicked. Note, the word return is not necessary. You might put blank lines instead of return to make its meaning clear. 6. The application class just returns an instance of the root class. 7. The main code is same as before. If you run the program, you can see that the app name is hello world all in lower case. 8. The KV file defines a rule for our root class. All rules are in the angle brackets. Since my box class implements the functionality of box layout, the buttons are arranged horizontally, the default orientation. Buttons have different properties. We define two here, the text and on press. The text indicates what is displayed. The on press is called whenever a click occurs on the particular widget. The right hand side calls either the hello or the world function of the root class. In fact, the right hand side could be any Python code. 9. You can find additional information including the source code at pythonmobile.blogspot.com.